Right, now that we actually know how to measure growth, let's understand what can cause economic growth. Economic growth can be caused in the short term and it can be caused in the long term. We might have short term growth, long term growth. We're going to first look at short term growth, which is also known as actual growth. The rate of growth that the economy is actually experiencing. Right? So, the way we measure short term growth, the way we look at it, is very simply by measuring the level of aggregate demand in the economy. So, when we look at short term growth, when we see an increase in short term growth, there must be an increase in aggregate demand. So, an increase in that equation. So, that might be because of an increase in consumption. It might be an increase in investment, an increase in government spending, an increase in net exports. Doesn't matter. One of these things, or more, might have increased, which then causes an increase in short-term growth. Why do I mean actual growth? Well, to understand, let's draw two diagrams. Let's draw a macro PPC diagram, where we've got capital goods, where we've got consumer goods, the only types of goods that can be made in the economy. So this is a macroeconomic PPC, and there is our PPC as we know and understand. Right. Well, the PPC, the actual curve, tells you the level, the maximum level of growth that this economy can produce at. Right. We can't produce a level of goods and services, a level of consumer capital goods beyond the PPC. Simply, we don't have the factors of production available for us to do so. So the PPC tells us the maximum production in the economy, uh, given the levels of factors of production available to us. So, if we're on the curve, we're producing the maximum possible amount. But if we're inside the curve, right, let's say a point x, there is still growth. That's our actual level of growth. But look, we could be at point y. So our potential growth could be, let's say, at point y, but our actual growth is here at point x. So that's what we mean by actual growth. And in the short term, that's what we're measuring. So an increase in short term growth will take us from x towards y. So, like I said, it'll be an increase in any one of these things. On a diagram, it's very simply an increase in aggregate demand. So, at top here, we're going to have the price level. And here, we're going to have real GDP. These diagrams you've come to know and understand. So, we have our aggregate supply. Okay, some of you have called it long run, I'm just going to call it aggregate supply. And basically, we've got aggregate demand here, which then shifts to the right, from 81 to 82. As a result, the level of growth increases in the economy from Y1 to Y2, and there is demand pull inflationary pressure from P1 to P2. So, you can see here, Y1 initially was our actual growth. Let's say that was point X. YFE on the diagram tells you the potential level of growth. This curve becomes vertical because beyond that, we can't, we can't produce anything. That's the maximum level of output given our factors of production. So that's our full employment level of output, our potential output, basically on the PPC. But when we see an increase in actual growth, an increase in any one of these things, we move towards our potential level of growth. We move towards, basically, the point on our PPC. And that increases short-term economic growth and as a result, there is some extra pressure on factors of production, demand pull inflationary pressure. So what might have done that? Various reasons. We might have had a reduction in interest rates. Right? A reduction in interest rates. As interest rates fall, money becomes cheaper to borrow. As people borrow money, they're going to spend more money on goods and services, and that increases consumption. There might have been an increase in investment which would increase I in that equation. There might have been an increase in government spending, or there might have been a reduction in tax. An increase in government spending, of course, would increase G. A reduction in tax, in taxation, would increase consumption. Okay? And maybe increase investment if it's corporation tax that's fallen. Maybe there's been an increase in net exports because of a fall in the exchange rate. Maybe that's another reason why. As the exchange rate falls, as it becomes weaker, um, a currency becomes weaker, it means exports become cheaper and imports become more expensive. 
As exports become cheaper, the demand for exports increases, so X goes up, and the demand for imports goes down because they become more expensive, so the level of imports goes down. Basically, this bracket increases in value, which then means that equation increases. So what we're trying to do here for short-term growth is to increase aggregate demand. Any time we increase aggregate demand, we're going to see short-term growth. Right? So that's important. That's one cause of economic growth. You can have short-term growth. But you can also have long-term growth. And you probably see where I'm going to go with this now. So long-term growth is not an increase in actual growth. It's an increase in potential growth. Right. So you can also have long-term growth. This is important, known as potential growth. And what can cause that? Basically, it's an increase in the quantity and or the quality of our factors of production. We'll look specifically at what that might involve in a little bit. So again, on the diagram, let's draw a PPC again. Macro PPC, where we've got consumer and capital goods. Remember what we said before, anywhere on the curve is the maximum level of output that the economy can produce. So let's say we were at point X, well an increase in potential growth would shift the curve outwards which would mean our potential growth can increase. It doesn't mean that we're going to end up at point Y. It means potentially we can increase growth now to point Y. Right? So that is meaningless because if actual growth is, let's say, at point T, right, an increase in potential growth doesn't actually increase actual growth. It's just an increase in potential growth. Okay? That's very important. And on a aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram, where we've got the price level and real GDP, An increase in potential growth, long-term growth, is an increase in long-run aggregate supply. It's an increase in the productive capacity of the economy. So basically from YFE1 to YFE2, it increases the productive capacity of the economy. So if I plonked on an aggregate demand curve here, you will see that actual growth would also increase. But the key thing to understand here without doing the rest of this, it doesn't really matter. It's an increase in the productive capacity of the economy. It's an increase in aggregate supply. An increase in the quantity and quality of our factors of production. So what might have caused that? Well, various whole host of reasons. There might have been an increase in productivity. So now, let's go back to this. An increase in the quantity and or the quality of factors of production. An increase in productivity improves the quality of labour which therefore increases how much we can produce as a labour force. So that would then increase um, aggregate supply. It might be an advancement of technology. Right, an advancement of technology. That increases the quantity and the quality of capital, which then increases um, aggregate supply. Yeah. It might have been, again, an increase in investment. So investment affects short-term and long-term growth. Again, the quantity and quality of capital increases, so aggregate supply shifts to the right. It might have been government spending improving infrastructure, so maybe an improvement in infrastructure, which is a big one. An improvement in infrastructure reduces the cost of production for firms. It makes it much easier for firms to transport goods and services around the economy. Uh, which again makes the economy run more efficiently, which means actually the economy can produce more in a given period of time. So an improvement in infrastructure, and maybe also an increase in migration. Okay, an increase in net immigration, I should say, sorry. An increase in immigration. As more people from abroad enter our labour force, the quantity of labour will increase, so aggregate supply will increase. So, you need to know, you've got short-term growth when aggregate demand goes up, and you've also got long-term growth when the quantity and the quality of our factors of production increase. When that happens, aggregate supply shifts to the right, it increases. 
also basically a shift of the PVC. All right? So there are two different types of economic growth, two different types of causes. You need to know them both, actual and potential. I hope that all makes sense. Very, very important video this one. Learn it well. See you next time. Thank you.